Hi, hello everyone. This is Cara Donut Lady Seven, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Sorry, it took me a while to get back into this, but Peter being weird, life happening, just a bunch of stuff. But at least I was able to get some stuff from a uh, Twitch up. I'm gonna try to do better with making sure that every day I have something up. But we will see how this goes. Anyway, last time we wrote a poem. Apparently, Sayori is supposed to like that a lot, according to what Monica said. I still like Monica and Sayori better than Yuri, and finally, Angry Strawberry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'm not sure who I should show it to next. I guess Sayori to get her out of the way, because she's supposedly gonna like it. And, yeah, I'll probably do Sayori. Yuri and Natsuki. Oh god, my mouth doesn't want to say these names today. Alright, and also, since I've heard that it takes a couple hours to get into the weirdness, I'm not sure if we're going to meet weirdness today or if it's just going to be normal. So, let's see how this goes. Hello, Sayori. You look very shocked for your three little dots. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Donut Man. Also, I just realized when I viewed this the last time, if you take my initials, they, sp they basically say DM. Why did I let my niece talk me into Donut Man for a name? Ugh, oh well. <laughs> eh? Yeah, that's how I feel about this. I love it! I had no idea you were such a good writer! I'm glad you liked it. Sayori? You must be seriously overreacting. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Sayori, but you are like 120 all day every day. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. We should be an honest. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Sorry, almost wish I had a face cam so you could see me shaking my head. Ugh, you are an adorable little sister, Sayori. <laughs> Jeez. Sure, Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Yes. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of people, you know? Being that we've been friends since children, yeah. So, when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Donut Man poem! Honestly, I kind of want to see a Donut Man poem now. Like an actual donut man. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Good? Sayori so hugs the sheet against her chest. Oh, she really likes this poem, apparently. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Sorry, I don't know what that was. My voice. Er, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. Good donut, man. See? It's like I said before, DM. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, are you? One would hope. One would hope. Trying new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. I suppose so. Thanks, Sayori. Not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Probably not, because she's not going to imagine that you're only here because there's cute girls. Then again... I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. 
Yes, you don't want to disappoint your friends. We understand. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure that you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Now you're reading my poem too, right? Uh, apparently. Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. You cannot be worse than me picking random words that I like. <laughs> we'll see about that. Oh, we actually have a poem. It's amazing! Dear Sunshine, The way you flew through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleep for the sleepy from my eyes, excuse me. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Okay, the I could sleep forever part kind of worries me. And that's because I sometimes feel like I could sleep forever, and it's not for good reasons. So... Yeah. Something tells me we might be getting into weird stuff this episode now. Okay, how do how do I continue? Okay, I click off of the poem. Sayori. This is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? <laughs> that is your guess? Well, I guess only I'm looking for the deeper meaning in poems half the time. Because I'm weird like that. Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. And I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Yes, and you made a good poem, Sayuri. Uh, yeah. Oh, this guy. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. Thank you. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. Yes, she does have a brain in her tummy. I need eggs and toast. And we're on to breakfast. <laughs> Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. To be fair, everybody does say it's the most important meal of the day, so... I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Eee. This was so much fun! Monica's the best! Uh, yeah? But next time, I won't forget. I'm kind of curious as to why you randomly said Monica the best, but... And I'm gonna write the best poem ever! Well, I guess I look forward to it. Okay, I do think we're getting into some weirdness here based on just that poem, so let's see what Yuri's got to say. I know you're not gonna like my poem too much, but, you know, I tried. Hmm. Dot dot dot. This is a lot of dots, Yuri. Yuri stares at the poem. I get you don't like it, because you give me constructive criticism at least. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Yeah, it's probably pretty small. Um. Oh! S sorry. I, I forgot to start speaking. Yeah, that, that would be a little helpful. Um, it's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Okay, to be fair, I know how that is. And you're like, how do I word this in a way that everybody can understand me? Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Er, yeah. Why do you ask? just making sure. 
I guess there might be after reading through it. Ah, so it's that bad. <laughs> no! It's okay, Yuri. It's okay if it's bad. Did I just raise my voice? Yes, it's okay. You can do that sometimes. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. Lady, it's okay. I pat you on the back if I could. <laughs> I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. Yeah, it seems like it. It's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. That makes sense. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I have to say, she makes a fair point. If you've ever read stuff by, like, new people that are new to writing, you will usually see some things that you're like, um... Especially if you've written before, it can sometimes stand out. Or maybe I just watch Trope talk too much on overly sarcastic productions. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. Yeah. Sorry, for a second I thought I read that wrong. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Fair enough. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Well, yeah, she's more in her element. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. Well, yeah, any new person has to go through all the stages of learning how to write. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Now, just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. Very well said. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. That would be nice, yes. Nat Ooh, excuse me as I kick up. Natsuki can be a little biased, though. I'm not surprised that Angry Strawberry can be biased. Biased? How? Um... Well... Never mind. I will probably find out in a moment. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I feel like this is a conversation I've had with my friends, but about something completely different. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Probably all three. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do! I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. And a little sad. That she's not able to, like, freely do that with everybody else in the club. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Yes. Woo. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. That's interesting. I always kind of like poems like this. I don't know why. It's just really interesting and it makes you think. Because we are definitely trying to race into the future, replacing a lot of really cool old school stuff. Dot dot dot. I'm sorry. I have such terrible handwriting. That is actually very pretty, it's just cursive, so some people will have no idea what you're writing. Because my nieces don't know cursive very well. They were not taught cursive. I, on the other hand, was told I would never use print again in my life and had to learn cursive in third grade. So, you know, yay teachers. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. See what I mean? 
I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. Yep. It wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. Yeah, I've read lots of poems in my time, so... Yeah. I've seen shorter poems than that. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. That's alright. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghost fury? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, DM. Really? You must have totally missed the point. Ah, uh, yeah. I think so, since there were actually no ghosts mentioned in it, except for possibly the person that was writing it. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember, the poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. Seriously, like, look at some of the old school poets. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon, to be left with nothing. Which is sad. It's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I question this dude a bit, but eh, you could try. I guess I'll have to keep trying. Exactly. I'm counting on you. Alright, well, since Angry Strawberry is the last one, let's go talk to Nat. Hi, Nat. You're gonna yell at me, aren't you? There's a lot of dots. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. Thanks. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. Not like I said it was bad. It just kind of implied, slightly. It just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your taste. Do you want to get smacked? This girl will smack me at some point in this game, I just know it. I'll pass. Thank you. <sighs> well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. You don't know that. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can see, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. You are somewhere between, like, children's author? You know, like the C. Jane Run type books, in my opinion. And possibly trying to be a little deeper, but you have no idea how to. That is my assumption with this poem, because the people can try, but that's about it. Seems like she's just stuck with this is how things are. Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. <laughs> I love how short our conversations seem to be. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, look. Because I am really, really not sure if you are not supposed to be, like, a fourth grader right now. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. People don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. This is very true. 
Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Not bad. Yeah, I understand. And I actually do. Okay, Angry Strawberry, you might not be so bad after all. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. Oh, you are a pro, Angry Strawberry? I'm glad you learned something. Don't expect that from- didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Eh, I don't know. Yeah, guess not. <laughs> I just had to humor her with my last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Good on ya. Okay, so... Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Yeah, well, you gotta learn somehow. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. You just started. Chill. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. No, really. Across the room, Sayuri and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective phones. Oh, please don't get into a fight. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns a poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks? Yours is cute. Cute. Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I I know that. I just meant... The language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um... Yeah, you two are like opposite ends of a pole. Or a magnet. Well, no. Actually, opposite ends of magnets attract each other. Never mind on that one. But yeah, you are two opposite ends of the spectrum. Well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmph. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Uh, I can't take constructive criticism, I think. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And DM too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all... Excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect to change anytime soon unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Blech, mouth worked for that word. Which I haven't. Mm -hmm. Please don't kill each other. And Donut like my poem too, you know. I think I'm gonna call myself Donut, because DM just sounds really weird. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh god. Oh. 
I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? Oh god, this music. <laughs> That's not what I... Uh... You're... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Donut appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Oh, jeez. Um. Yeah, can we not? Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Donut started showing up. I'm pretty sure she doesn't have any control over that. N Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! I, I don't like fighting, guys! Suddenly both girls turned toward me as if they just noticed I was standing there. They probably did. Donut! She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. Oh god, Natsuki, you are a small child. I swear you're like five years old. She could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective. Then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? You mean you should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Donut. Wait. There's a reason why so... There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Donut? Um... Well... Dot dot dot. How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So of course, that's gonna be... Um... Okay. My problem is, I understand Natsuki's point of view, I understand Yuri's point of view. So, Sayuri, help me out here. I'm not in charge here. I did have no say in this. Natsuki... Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri... Dot dot dot. Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Uh... Sayori! Eh? Help? Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Donut man. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayuri wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. It's your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. Ladies, stop it. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why Monica, stop them. Exactly why nobody likes... Stop! Hey, they shut up. Natsuki, Yuri. You guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people. And I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems... They're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? 
because, well, thank you, Sayuri. Also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Thank you for that. Big and beautiful. <laughs> oh, Sayori. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Sayori. Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. Ow! Make some tea. Bye. <laughs> Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayuri is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest? I might come off as a good leader, and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. It's okay, Monica. <laughs> nah. It's not like I can blame you. Yeah, getting in between two people fighting is usually never a good idea. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well... I guess that just means Sayuri is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. She's like a little sister to me. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knock. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get a chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How do you all feel about sharing poems? Or did you, excuse me. It was a lot of fun. Well, I say it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. Donut, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Something tells me I'm doing this the entire game. And maybe you learned something from your friends, too. So your problems will turn out even better. Hopefully. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I don't really care about impressing anybody! Sorry! I nod to myself with newfound determination. I suppose if you're actually interested in dating one of these girls, it really helps. But I'm just like, sorry, I'm still just gonna pick words I like. Donut! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayuri beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayuri and I have spent this much time together. Yeah, well, you do tend to hide in the house. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayuri? About what happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki? Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no! That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise, they're both wonderful people. Don't worry, I believe you. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? Of course I don't. No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Sometimes I wonder about the wording in this thing. Phew. You know, Donut Man? It's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. As long as they don't want to kill me, I am still on the fence about Natsuki. There. That's... <laughs> I 
every day is gonna be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Fury still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? Doesn't have to, but it's not a bad thing if it does either. We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayuri. I pat Sayuri on the shoulder. I totally thought that said head for a second. I don't know why. I guess because she reminds me of a puppy. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayuri as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Alright. Strawberry, calm, doki doki, anime, memory, smile, puppy, extraordinary, sunny, special. I think I picked strawberry last time for strawberry. And since I just said puppy, we'll go with puppy. Sing, incongruent, embrace, mouse, nibble, dream, horror, family, inferno, fireworks. I don't know if I picked sing, but I like singing, so. Warm, promise, pure, heaven sent, peaceful, precious, variant, summer, bunny, atone. Hmm. Not sure here. Uh, heaven sense is an interesting word. You don't get to use that often. Wonderful, dark, vitality, joy, hair, hopeless, holiday, fantasy, meager, bliss. Let's go with fantasy. Flea, agonizing, infinite, scars, lipstick, daydream, imagination, determination, determination. Sorry. Giggle, climax. Um, scars worry me to a small degree. And imagination and daydream can sometimes go together, but I think, let's see, I feel like I should be trying to pick words that go together, but at the same time, like, I just want to pick words I like, so, uh, let's say determination, because we're being determined right now. Destiny, together, fear, unending, vivacious, heartbeat, passion, cheeks, journey, suicide. I don't like this word showing up, it worries me. Uh, destiny. Pout, parfait, defeat, flying, skipping, desire, party, hop, cage, dance. Let's do a parfait. Lollipop, shiny, sticky, flower, clumsy, adventure, marshmallow, clouds, tragedy, amazing. Um, clouds. Excitement, rose, prayer, empty, kitty, melancholy, email, fictal, sunset, entropy? Anthropy? Is that how I say that? I am not sure. I'm gonna go with Rose because I like roses. Eternity, Rainbow, Sadness, Universe, Tears, Wrath, Comfort, Love, Hurt, Lazy. We're gonna go with rainbows. Aura, Disaster, Philosophy, Essence, Secretive, Bed, Headphones, Chocolate, Silly, Whisper. Well, I like my headphones because music can come out of those. I like chocolate because chocolate. Uh, let's go chocolate. Valentine, cute, electricity, feather, vertigo, laugh, jump, jumpy, depression, lust. I worry about depression being here. Jump and jumpy are like, why exactly? Um, let's go with laugh. Waterfall, beauty, fun, boop, sparkle, awesome, breath, poof, spies, milk. I like a lot of these. Um, let's go with the waterfall. Cry, uncontrollable, loud, infallible, vivid, misery, ocean, kawaii, marriage, bubbles. Um, this is a word you don't get to use much, so. Fester, shame, efflu, eff, effulgent? Effulgent? I'm not sure how to say this word, I'm sorry. Insight, graveyard, sweet, skirt, papa, disoriented, Whistle. Eh, graveyards are interesting. Starscape, pain, grief, friends, pleasure, blanket, peace, vanilla. Existence? Existence? I feel like this is existence, but at the same time, I feel like I'm spelling it wrong in my head, so I'm not sure. Unstable. Starscape, peace, friends. Eh, Starscape. Kiss, crimson, charm, sensation. 
Nature, Nightgown, Fluffy, Melody, Death, Analysis. Uh, Melody. Swimsuit, Uncanny, Lucky, Romance, Shopping, Spinning, Fireflies, Contamination, Treasure, Frightening. Mm, fireflies. Childhood Games, Heart, Pink, Sugar, Color, Judgment, After Image, Alone, Broken. These two together worry me. Alone and Broken. I, I don't know if they have anything to do with each other, but they worry me. Um, let's go with games. Intellectual, Covet, Extreme Play, Rain Cloud, Landscape, Music, Vacation, Socks, Disown. Uh, I'm getting a little music. Alright, another meeting. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. That's good. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Donut. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to being in the club. To you being in the club. Ah, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyways. Speaking of which... I'm kind of hungry. Why am I not surprised, kiddo? Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look in your purse, Sayuri? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. Are you hiding snacks in there? I just wanted to look at it. Ah. Uh... Sayuri nervously retrieves her coin purse. Oh, wait. She's broke, isn't she? She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So, either you're not that hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to convincingly forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Blah. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Ah! Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Of course, Yuri, of course. Yuri! Tell Donut to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides... You should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling this genius little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. You are like the mom character, aren't you, Yuri? Dot dot dot. Uh, did I just... Yes, you did. I didn't mean that. I got too observed into my book. You. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? 
Probably. That's why there's so many cartoons that have a devil and an angel on your shoulder. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Siri knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on. Give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Whoa. Whap. Yeah. I don't know where something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Not very nice there. Ow. What was... Eh? Uh, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is... is this a miracle? <laughs> yes. It's because I paid my restitution? Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Ha! <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Ha <laughs> ha! Natsuki? That's so nice of you! Are you okay? Are you ill? I'm so happy! Sayori hugs the cookie. Uh, Sayori. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Hmm? Sayori suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! Oh, Sayori. Yeah. Okay, Angry Strawberry, you're not so bad. At least when it comes to Sayori. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. So, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Hee <laughs> so hee. gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and then wraps her arms around her. Ah, friendly hugs. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayuri off of her. Um, Sayuri suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Aha! H hey! Did she seriously just do that? Of course she did. Uh-huh, uh -huh. Mouthful, Sayuri trots away to safety. You and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayuri? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? <laughs> Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. I'm getting concerned. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. I think that'll depend on who you talk to. Eh, that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Her boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? 
Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. But how'd you have anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Ooh, piano player. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play sometime for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Donut. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Yeah, when you're first learning something, don't pressure yourself into being perfect immediately. <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. Random cookie chaos, but you know, the, the usual. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. How are you surprised at this? Here is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. I just see her like hiding in like a little dark hole reading. Suddenly I suddenly, suddenly I picture Golem. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Strawberry. Didn't mean to. Donut man, donut man, Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Okay. Wanna come with me? This guy probably not. Supplies? But four. Well you know how the festival is coming up. Ooh, excuse me, they pick burp. Me and Monica are gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Ah, are you going with Donut to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aw, but I wanted to go. So much more fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find post paper too, okay? Okay! Ready, Donut? Yep, let's go. So Yuri and I exited the club room. Follow behind as Sayuri hums and skips around the hall road. Honestly, feels like I'm talking to a kid, taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayuri finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey Sayuri, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? Not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. Performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah. That sounds... interesting? Kinda dull, of course. Donut, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. Like, you say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. 
I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, pressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that! I'm not sure I performed that up to say Yuri standards, but I tried. Sayuri, how do I put this? I am sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh, you meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. Ah, I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty an ordinary contrast to your cute self. Ha, <laughs> don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, I'm so excited! Festival's gonna be so much fun! Sari spins herself around in the hallway again. Please don't follow her. Hey, Donut, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayuri like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She is nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayuri brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Yes, it's called hanging out with friends, actual people. Two of us enter the classroom. Sayuri heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayuri pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too! Kind of dirty, though. Sayuri starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color! Oh boy. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah! I dropped one by accident! Smack. Uh, oh, jeez, what did you do, Sayuri? Half! Ah! Sayuri bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. Ooh, I've done that once or twice. Not fun. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow! You okay? My forehead. Sayuri clutches her forehead. No kidding. Gee, Sayuri. It's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayuri is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sayuri. But it hurts. You really are like a little kid. Just do it for a second. Sayuri slowly raises her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow! Sorry, just hang on. Actually, sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. I'm not surprised by this. A bump is starting to form as well, as I would have expected. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find some, find you some ice. Donut. Where would I even find ice this around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even winsome from the pain, Sayuri makes a silly joke. Thank you for that, Sayuri, because I feel like that's something I would do. I'd be like, it's cool, I'll just be a unicorn for a few days. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Just don't have a concussion. I pat Sayuri on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. You can drink it after? But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. Just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. 
At least they were already in the wrong spots before I s spilled them. Sayuri, here. I hand Sayuri the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayuri opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayuri, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayuri places the bottle against the pump on her head. It stings. Yes, you did just hurt yourself, kiddo, so you're gonna hurt a little bit. Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, don't it? This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time. I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like, I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get, get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? How do you not remember this? I swear to god my character has amnesia. Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. Thank you, good lord. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kinda like this time too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. No not. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. That's because you're probably used to her like a little sister, as I've been saying. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you have friends for so long. Yes, you actually start to care about them. Ooh. Really? Maybe you're right. Don't it? I'm so glad that nothing changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? As long as you guys keep in touch, probably. Forever. If I'm honest to myself. There's no telling where we'll end up for college or after that. It wouldn't be fair to make any promises, but... Well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. Yes, I expect her to always try to keep in contact with you, so you better keep in contact with her, pal. I'm so happy. Sayuri has a whimsical expression in her eyes. She remains silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside, and when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. Uh, how about you grab the other stuff first? I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sayori so hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Ooh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. Where is the rest of the stuff? You got crayons! You had other things to get. She's gonna question. Ugh, these kids. Or people, or whatever. Focus. Follow Sayuri out of the classroom. Just make Sayuri sit in a desk while you find the other stuff, and then go back. Sayuri plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the classroom. Ah, you're back! Good timing, I was just about to start 
with sharing our problems. It Sayuri, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about it. I was playing with the crayons and snuck my forehead onto the shelf. Into the shelf, excuse me. Uh, Sayuri. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. <laughs> well, anyway. Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh. I have a right... Eh. Yeah, nobody grabbed it. Siri frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff! Calm down, Sayuri. I have it all right here. Thank you. It wasn't written, so I didn't know if you remembered anything. I found the post paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, don't it? Ah well, Sayuri. I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayuri. I made it an adventure. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your problems? Guess I should grab mine. For making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Alright, same thing. Alright, so, like last time, we will start with Monica, then we're probably doing Sayuri, Yuri, and Atsuki. And... I think we're gonna end after Monica again. Just because that's what I did last time, so this will be like the end point, I guess. For every episode. Hi again, Donut Man. Hello, Monica. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Thanks, Monica. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. That would be nice. Haha, <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. Monica, you never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Dot dot dot. Alright! It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayuri like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. Yeah, well, good friends. You kind of become like a weird Batman Robin combination. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But you and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. Sorry, for a second my brain was like, what happened there in that sentence? And you can talk to me every now and then too. If it gave me the chance to. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Only because the game won't let me click on you. Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. You're fine, Moni. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, and an endless canopy of meaningless noise. Sorry about that random click there. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on pizza crust. An endless poem of meaninglessness. Meaningless. Load me. What? Okay, I can't. I can't highlight anything, can I? Because. This is both worrying and sad. 
I don't know how I feel about this. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. I like it, it just makes me feel bad. Especially the title. I'm like, don't feel sad. I'm not sure what you're feeling sad about, but don't feel sad. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. Yeah, that makes sense. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Okay, dear, what is it? Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. No problem, Monica. I feel like I probably should have saved beforehand when it was like, who are you going to side with? But, oopsie. Alright, we're just gonna go ahead and save this game. Oop. Yeah, sure. Triple check that it's saved. God, it was a long time between. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> okay, anyway. We will call this an episode because I know this has been going on for, I'm gonna say, at least an hour. Oh, excuse me while I stretch. Sorry. But this has been going on for a while, so thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. We will definitely see how this goes because things are starting to slowly get a little weird, at least to me. But we will see how far down the rabbit hole we gotta go on this. And hopefully we will do it together. I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a stellar day. I love you. Mwah. See you later.